Here's how I recommend performing chin-ups. The techniques in this video have helped me add 30 kilograms to my chin-ups in just one year. Chin-ups or pull-ups are the king of pulling exercises. They're the one bodyweight exercise that actually scales really well with strength. The pros of this movement are that it works everything. It improves proprioception because you're also moving your center of mass, as compared to something like a lat pulldown, which works the same muscles, but your body doesn't move. The only real con is that, as it turns out, your body is pretty heavy, so beginners are gonna need to regress this with bands or eccentric reps. In this video, I'll be demonstrating chin-ups, that is having your hands supinated on the bar rather than a neutral grip or a pronated grip, as in what we call pull-ups. Pros of the chin-up grip are that most people can get a better lockout and bring their chest to the bar at the top. I also find it's easier on my elbows after recovering from golfer's elbow. Chin-ups also emphasize the biceps more than pull-ups do. The cons are that many people lack mobility to fully relax and elevate the shoulders at the bottom of each rep, but you'll build this over time, don't worry about it. This exercise involves three primary movements, shoulder depression, shoulder abduction and flexion, and elbow flexion. I emphasize shoulder depression because I think it's the most overlooked and the most important aspect for long-term strength development, as I'll discuss later. The primary muscles worked in this are the lats, the trapezius, and the biceps. The secondary muscles are the forearms, the teres major, pretty much every single back muscle, your pecs, and once you start adding weight, your abs will get gassed too. Begin by grabbing a bar or rings with your palms facing you. Experiment to find a comfortable position. Roughly shoulder width works for most people. Relax everything except your grip into a dead hang, allowing the shoulders to shrug up to your ears as far as they comfortably can. Either straighten your legs or bend your knees so that your heels come back behind you. The leg position isn't so important, we just want to fix it into one comfortable position and then forget about it. If you're tall like I am, you'll have to bend your knees so that your feet don't hit the ground in between each rep. In one motion, depress your shoulders maximally, as if trying to put your elbows into your pockets. As a result of this intention, your body will move smoothly towards the bar, finishing with your chest touching the bar. Of course, your elbows must bend to do this, but I find that focusing on the elbow bend misses the point of this exercise. It's not a bicep curl. We're using the lats and the traps to depress the shoulders and rotate the arms. The elbow bend will happen on its own. Avoid the use of momentum or swing in order to get you through the rep. A no momentum rep will take about one second. Feel free to go slower if you want, but I find one second concentrics to be great. At the top, pause for a moment in the maximal contraction. This will feel great and help kill any swing you generated before slowly reversing the movement to lower down under control. Each rep finishes with a full relaxation of the shoulder blades so that they shrug up naturally. Now let's go over some common mistakes. The first is doing a partial range of motion. This is fine if you experience pain in some range of motion, then avoid it for as long as necessary. But a huge benefit of this exercise over something like a row is the giant range of motion it allows and the shoulder stretch at the bottom. So aim to progress this over time. Another mistake is kipping. Using momentum from the rest of your body takes effort away from the muscles we're actually wanting to train. It's fine to kip when you've already reached failure and you're trying to add more intensity, but I would avoid it until then. However, one thing to note is that I allow my legs to do basically whatever they want, which in practice is bending the knees at the bottom and then curling forward at the top. These are compensations, but they feel comfortable and they allow a larger range of motion for me. I just don't use these motions to generate momentum, and I progress by adding weight, not by keeping my body rigid like a plank. Another mistake is isolating the scapula movement from the arm movement. It should be performed as one fluid movement. A lot of coaches advise starting with the scapula shrug and then doing the pull-up, but I think it's a big mistake. It ends up limiting the amount of shoulder depression you can bring to the entire movement. For a deeper explanation on this, watch my video entitled My Pull-Up Solution, but for now, just take my word for it. The final mistake is going too heavy too fast. It's fine to start with bands. Check your ego here. Pull-ups are really humbling. If you can't do 10 strict reps, then use bands. Many people think that they can start on bodyweight reps, but there's a huge imbalance in their scapula position from left to right. Be careful of this. Allow your form to improve before going heavy. Remember, the point of training is to get strong in the future, not to pretend you're strong already. It's fine to use bands. Train wherever you are, you'll get strong very soon. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more educational fitness content. In this series, I'll feature tutorials for all the exercise in my program and my clients' programs. Get strong for life.